Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Stock Market with your bi-weekly Apple analysis done on Thursday 21st of March. I'm recording this video now, just gone 10 to 7 in the evening New York time on Thursday the 27th, New York, 21st New York time. Here's my daily chart for Apple. I have a main wave count, this one, and I also have a less likely alternate. The main wave count sees a super cycle degree, a zigzag unfolding to the downside. Within it, cycle wave A unfolding at primary degree into a five wave impulse and the third wave within that impulse extending. Within primary three we have intermediate one complete, it's confirmed over and intermediate two is confirmed as underway with this really clear trend channel breach of this channel containing the impulse for intermediate wave one down. This is most likely a second wave correction beginning and I'd expect it to probably reach about the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio of intermediate wave, wave 1 down. At this stage my target for upwards movement to end is about 527.51. Intermediate wave 2 may not move beyond the start of 1 above 594.59. The most likely structure for this second wave is a zigzag which means its A wave should subdivide to a 5, we'll have a 3 down for a B, and a 5 up for a C. So in the middle of this upwards trend, we're going to have a big interruption downwards for a V wave coming up. My long-term target for primary 3 remains the same. At 272, it will reach 1.618, the length of primary wave 1. That's a long-term target that's months away. Let's have a look at what's happening with the second wave correction on the hourly chart with a low for intermediate wave 1 down here, is this point down here. So within minor wave A we have a leading diagonal for minute 1, a double zigzag for minute 2, a nice impulse for minute 3 which moved just a little bit higher from last analysis. Last analysis was expecting some downward sideways movement for a shallow fourth wave correction which is pretty much exactly what we got. I expected it to last one or two sessions. It's lasted just over two sessions, being a more time-consuming triangle. I've checked all of these subdivisions on the five-minute chart, and they all subdivide really nicely, and the E-wave looks like it's also a little triangle at the end. Where the trend lines of the triangle cross over is where the session ended for Thursday. We may see a strong upwards thrust on Friday begin, as we see a little trend change at this point in time. It looks like minute wave 4 is finding support at the lower edge of this channel. I've drawn this using Elliott's technique around minor wave A impulse from the high of minute 1 to the high of minute 3. Draw the first trend line, place a parallel copy on the low of minute 2. It shows us very nicely where minute 4 is finding support. This may be where a small third wave up is initiated when tomorrow's market opens. There's a nice Fibonacci, well an adequate Fibonacci ratio between minute wave 3 and minute wave 1, so we may not see a Fibonacci ratio for minute wave 5. At 471.82 it would reach a quality in length with minute 1, but that target doesn't have a very good probability. Using Minuet wave degrees within minute 5 may be a better way to find a target, or alternately at this stage we can use this trend channel. I'd expect minute wave 5 to be pretty likely to end midway within this channel, and it has to subdivide into a 5 wave structure. When it's done, when you can see a clear 5 up on the hourly chart complete, subsequent movement below this channel on the hourly chart would give us indication that minor wave A in its entirety would be over and minor wave B downwards would then be underway. Movement below 451.81, that's the start of minute wave 5, would also give us price confirmation that minor wave A would be over and minor wave B would be underway because at that stage downwards movement can't just be a second wave correction within the fifth wave and so the fifth wave would have to be over. When we see price move below the channel and below 451.81, expect choppy, overlapping downwards movement for a B wave, and within a zigzag, wave B may not move beyond the start of A, 
below 419. The B wave should last maybe one to three weeks, depending on what structure it takes. On the daily chart, this is my alternate. So far from the all-time high, we have a 5-3-5 five wave structure downwards. It could be a zigzag. This is if super cycle wave 2 is unfolding as a flat, and within it, cycle wave A itself may be unfolding as a flat. Within a flat, primary wave A must subdivide to a 3. If that's the case, it could be a complete zigzag. And within a flat, primary wave B must reach at least 90% the length of A. That's achieved at 676.46. And within a flat, primary B may make a new high beyond the start of primary A. An expanded flat requires the B wave to be 105% the length of the A wave, so a new all-time high would actually be pretty likely. We would know that this alternate wave count is correct if we see movement above 594.59, so if that happens at that stage, we can have some confidence price should keep going up to at least 676.46 and is actually pretty likely to make a new all-time high. In the short term for Apple, I'm expecting a bit more upwards movement. My target, 471.82, maybe one to three sessions away. But it doesn't have a good probability. I'll be looking to see a clear five up on the hourly chart, and then I'll be using that trend channel to tell me when the upwards movement is going to be interrupted by a B wave to the downside. And that B wave should be choppy and overlapping and generally trending lower and sideways maybe. That's all for me today with your Apple analysis and I hope that everyone is looking forward to a really awesome weekend.